So obviously uh, we're disappointed in how we performed and how we closed out the game over the last five minutes, uh, in particular the last five minutes. But uh, the entire second half uh, was it was not a half that we wanted to have. Um, but really the last four or five minutes, you have to give credit uh, to uh, Sahar and, and the Canisius team. They did a very nice job of uh, putting us in situations where we had difficulty guarding. And uh, throughout the second half, there was a lot of long rebounds off of long three-point shots. And we, uh, we had challenged them at halftime to crash the glass exceptionally hard. And uh, our kids were going to the glass, but unfortunately, when you have long threes, uh, that usually results in long rebounds, and we were going the wrong direction. Uh, and we needed to, to recognize that earlier and box out stronger. Um, when you have a distinct advantage inside, like we did this evening, uh, y you feel good about taking advantage of that. Uh, but I walked into a locker room that made me feel really good. Um, it was dead silent. People were not happy. And that's the way it should be. That's the way Duquesne basketball has been. Uh, we're not real happy with this win. Uh, it w we'll, we'll take it, but uh, our performance was not up to the standard it needs to be. It's exceptional. Uh, that's you, you want the kids to not be happy. Uh, it, 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 we didn't execute and we didn't perform up to our capability. We did not compete for 40 minutes, which is one of the things I challenged them with two days ago. And, and, and I did it in the locker room uh, before the game started. I said, guys, there's not going to be any rah-rah speech. There's not going to be anything about energy or enthusiasm. If we're going to be a good basketball program and reach our goals, it's going to be with people that are ultra competitive. And our kids, are like we always talk about, are great young women, and they're very competitive in the classroom. I mean, our grades are off the charts in very difficult majors. Now it's guiding them to be ultra competitive when we get to uh, the basketball court. And we showed flashes of that. I thought we were pretty good in the first half, at moments in the third quarter. Excuse me, the second quarter, uh, but uh, we didn't put a full 40 or even 30 minutes, uh, 30, 34 minutes together, uh, which would have been a, a better uh, feeling. So we're disappointed, but we'll take the W. Yeah, you know, uh, Hallie's in a situation where um, she wants to prove that she can still do this. It may not be the best thing for her long-term health. And so we're really trying to manage her minutes uh, so that um, she'll be able to play. And we did that tonight. And, and the reason why Hallie plays is she knows every position from every, every set, every position. She's willing to sacrifice her body in so many different ways and take charges. And she has something to prove. She wants to prove to people and to herself that she can still do this at a high level. And it, you couldn't ask for something for a kid who's in her sixth year and has come off the, the a knee injury that I've never – that the best doctors in Pittsburgh and the best PTs in Pittsburgh have said is one of the worst knee injuries they've ever seen. For her to return and play college basketball is, is literally, in all seriousness, a miracle. And she's doing it where she provides value and she's not a charity case. She is going to be a key to our success as we move forward because that competitiveness and that drive she has – I was trying to limit her minutes tonight to eight to 10 minutes because of what we have coming up. We have a nine day stretch where we have a, a good Temple team, a very good Kent State team and a St. Francis team that took us to the wire last year. And we get to do all of that during the beginning of finals. Um, so, you know, we're gonna have to rely on her uh, and we wanna preserve her body as much as we can, but you can't say enough positive things about the team basketball player that Hallie Bovell is. Uh, so you got 19 points off Tresha Stockton on eight and nine shooting when she didn't even attempt a three. 
What does it mean to have that kind of automatic domination? Well, she should. Uh, I mean, she's six foot three, six foot four, playing against five eleven, six foot. Like, you know, the thing I was happy about is that she posted, and after we found her, she took her time. Because you work really, really hard to post and get open. And then after she, she caught the ball, she took her time and went up strong. And she should be eight for nine. So, I mean, like, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to give her a cupcake because she went for eight for nine. Like, there, there's no celebration there. That's, that's what the expectation should have been. Um, I thought she played a good game. I, I did. I thought she played a good game. But she did exactly what she was expected to do. So I'm happy with that performance from Precious today. She did a nice job. Just curious in terms of uh, Tess Myers, I know not the biggest impact in this particular game, but if you look more big picture, just what do you feel like she's been doing well this season and this upper season? What kind of growth have you seen in her game? Uh, and what does it mean to your team to have someone with her family background that you've seen obviously in such a short time? Um, with Tess, you have a situation where uh, she has not shot the ball well in the last game or two. Um, but you have to respect her ability to shoot the three. And uh, in the Siena game, she turned down numerous shots. And, and even tonight, we thought that she turned down some shots. And so we've got to work on that. Um, not sure what that is, uh, but she's made a big jump. Uh, she shoots the ball well. She's a good post defender. She's a good rebounder for a guard. She has to be a better – she's got to be able to guard guards – uh, better. But does she compete? Absolutely. But, uh, but she needs to compete more when she's guarding guards. Um, she's a great kid. And, um, you know, she had four rebounds tonight and, and she did some good things. Uh, but we have to have her be able to knock down shots for us to have success. And it's uncharacteristic for her to be one for five. Um, she's a kid that usually is going to be at 40%. And uh, so we've got to get her back on that. And that's going to get some extra shots up, and, and I'm sure she'll get there. Dan, you mentioned before about getting the ball off of Libby's hands as much as possible, especially with Meg's throws. She had 10 assists tonight, which is a career best for her. How has she grown in her decision-making and including other teammates in that process? Well, I, I – you know, our – our guards didn't play great. You know, we, we had 14 turnovers where, you know, there was multiple turnovers where we threw the ball at people's feet and uh, we didn't come meet passes. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I thought we could have done better uh, from our guards, Libby and Meg, uh, handling, handling the ball and, and running the team a little bit better. And that's going off of not watching film. I may feel a little bit different after watching the film. Um, I mean, she had nine points, ten rebounds, and five assists. It's still a pretty good night. Um, you know, for, for Meg, we've got to have her make those free throws. Um, we can't keep coming up uh, empty on half the time that she goes to the free throw line. And uh, so, and, and I know she's completely capable of it, and she works hard at shooting the ball. Um, and, uh, you know, she's got to shoot the three at a little bit better level, a little bit better clip also. Uh, but Meg McConnell is a very, very good basketball player, and uh, and Libby is also, uh, you know, their ability to penetrate uh, in, against the defense in the first half uh, was a big difference in us gaining that lead in the first half. Their ability to change pace uh, and to get into the lane. Um, but uh, do I think that they can both play better? Yes. Um, it, 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 here's the thing. They, that's what they have to do. I mean, they, they, they don't have any way to match up with us inside. Uh, the, the, the Canisius coaching staff did a very good job of putting their kids in a position to compete against us and utilizing what their strengths are. Uh, they, they can't throw it down to the block. We just have so much of a, a size advantage, and, and we have the depth of that also. So, um, you know, for us, it, you know, Taking 18 threes in a game is actually a little bit of a low number for us. Um, you know, it's about a third of our shots. We're typically a little bit higher than that. Um, some nights you're not gonna, the ball's not gonna go in, and uh, 
I don't think there's any long-term repercussions from that. I think the kids just need to get in on the shooting gun and, and get some shots up and get some rhythm and feel good about themselves. Uh, but a, a bigger problem to me is is that – uh, they were closing out, and we were settling for threes when we could have filled the. We could have found the people in the post even more, and uh, we we settled for threes way too many times. Uh, Fatu may have had 19 points, but you know, every three that she took, in my eyes, she kind of settled for that, and she needed to attack. And uh, you know, we've got to get a little bit better with our shot selection, especially when we hold an advantage inside, and and and. I'll just leave it at that. Leave it at that. Appreciate you supporting women's basketball. Appreciate you being here. Thank you.